Welcome everybody to uh, our official pre-deployment briefing for Operation Verdant Gambit. It's uh, obviously our second and final deployment for 2023. So before we get into the meat and potatoes, we're going to cover some of the basics, uh, all basically as listed on screen. So again, as we've just sort of talked about, I encourage uh, anyone who's interested in doing so to stream or record this briefing. Uh, we'd obviously love to get the word out there about what we're doing as a unit. Um, you know, from from our side of things in uh, S3 operations, we're proud of this deployment so far. Uh, and we would love for as many people to be part of it as possible. Uh, all of that being said, our normal unit decorum applies in terms of realism and immersion. Uh, we are considering this an official event, uh, so let's keep our standards high. Uh, I would ask that you do uh, keep yourself uh, muted, uh, especially if you do use voice activation, um, and hold any questions um, if you can, we have designated holding points for questions throughout the briefing. Um, so to make a note of it uh, if you're able to, and we'll come back to it when we get to an appropriate holding point. Um, but you know, if something comes up that we absolutely, you know, you know, nothing I'm saying is making any sense until your question get it, gets answered, then you know, feel free to drop that uh, in chat as we go. And just checking the, the presentation is working for everybody. These slides are advancing as I talk through them and stuff like that. Correct. A firm. A firm, uh, Lieutenant. Good to go. Excellent. I, uh, if, if, if it's not working for anybody, please uh, speak up or watch the stream of someone for whom the slides are working. Um, all right. So by way of introduction, um, Welcome to the first joint briefing that we've held uh, in the unit for quite some time. Uh, and it's the first one that we're holding with the current makeup of S2 Intelligence and S3 Operations. There's been a bit of a shift uh, in uh, kind of, you know, the, the structure and leadership of both of these uh, shops. So uh, this is kind of new territory for all of us. So um, myself and Sergeant Mikowski, along with Lieutenant Lee um, and Mr. Lafarva hosting this briefing on behalf of S3 Operations and S2 Intelligence. Uh, but um, this briefing couldn't exist without the time and effort um, of our, uh, you know, our staff in, in S2 uh, Intelligence, uh, in particular the intelligence specialists uh, and the battle captains from S3 Operations. So um, on that front, I'd also like to give special acknowledgement to um, anyone else here from the wider S6 group, our Aries operators, our mission team, um, mod team and so on for their wide ranging and enthusiastic support of this unit's deployment activities. Um, I also wanna take a moment to acknowledge my colleagues from company and unit HQs uh, who are present today for their unwavering support of what S3 Operations is working towards achieving. Um, all told, uh, our S-Shop volunteers spend countless hours making these things possible. And I wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has been involved um, for their service so far. So just to establish these up front, um, also I know we've had a bit of an influx of people to the unit lately, so we just want to make sure that everyone is on absolutely the same page. So we're going to use our normal colour coding throughout the presentation to quickly annotate friendly, enemy, civilian, etc. Um, so if you do see, you know, words in a colour or a word you're not familiar with in a colour, hopefully the colour helps, uh, you know, explain who they are in the big picture. Uh, we're going to use a range of acronyms throughout, uh, mostly on our slides, uh, but uh, you know where it makes sense, we may say them as well. Uh, this is a good example of where a quick question on the spot may be appropriate if you're not tracking on an acronym that we're using pretty heavily. Um, I think most of these acronyms are pretty well known throughout the unit, um, except for a couple. So. We have ASIO, the Australian Security Intelligence Organisation. Um, RA SIGS is the Royal Australian Corps of Signals. Um, and SCIF, I think most people are probably aware of, uh, but it's a sensitive compartmented information facility. Um, all right, so 
let's uh, start to then talk about our uh, agenda for the briefing today. Um, so from an S2 side, S2 Intelligence is going to provide an initial briefing on the country we're heading to. Uh, we're going to brief you on the intelligence efforts of our counterparts uh, in uh, the US Navy uh, and the Royal Australian Corps of Signals um, and ASIO, which you know their intelligence is what initially led uh, to a ground forces deployment. And then S3 Operations will provide a high-level briefing on the current state of US operations. Um, we'll do that. We'll do that first up, uh, and then after that, after S2's brief, S3 Operations will flesh things out in a bit more detail on the ground. So we'll discuss the initial deployment of one BCT headquarters, the headquarters company, um, and Charlie Company, and their uh, assets. We will provide you with our best assessment of their current disposition and some context around the Alpha Company deployment and the deployment of further oncoming assets. Uh, we'll then give you a bit of a rundown uh, with sort of everything we know about the hostile force. Uh, which also um, brings us to our first question break and concludes kind of our introductions. Um, so uh, our first question break, a qu cues in chat if anybody has any questions um, at this point. I'll give you a couple of seconds and uh, if there are none, we'll keep moving. All right, great. Um, at this point, then, I'll hand over to Sergeant Mikowski as the S3 Operations NCOIC. Thank you, Lieutenant Hardman. So we're going to get started by setting the stage of the high-level summary of the situation going on right now. High-level summary there was the U.S. Naval and Australian intelligence sources collaborated to identify counterintelligence operations originating from the Indian Ocean. S2 Intelligence will expand on this later on in the briefing. However, ground forces from the 1st BCT and Charlie Company 1506 were subsequently deployed to the small island nation of Kupale, and that happened on the 2nd of July of this year. 1 BCT headquarters, call sign Odin, has established Air Base Heimdall. Charlie Company, the 1506, call sign Chaos, established Cop Magnus. Despite the obvious presence of non-nationals in Kupale, the civilian population either genuinely does not know the true intent of Op 4 or they're refusing to cooperate with us. Shortly after Airbase Heimdall and Cop Magnus were established, the Chaos Command ordered an, and conducted a number of patrols against suspected Op 4 positions derived from the joint intelligence teams of the US Naval and Australian intelligence. But nothing was in those positions on arrival, indicating either further counterintelligence operations or a well-informed, highly mobile, and highly skilled R4. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, that should be coming through in a second. I've just, I've just clicked it. Everyone should yep. be seeing the high-level summary slide with the list of dates. Hey, for... Hey, for... So Sergeant McCaskey, you should stand by one. Uh, right. Chaos patrols reported encounters with significant and persistent electronic warfare from sources unknown, which initially dictated change in their SOP. On the 16th of July, 2023, Charlie Company XO reverted all platoons to only conducting pre- and post-patrol report-ins to Company HQ. This was due to persistent electronic warfare preventing anything else and no, or very limited, direct contact with Op 4. On the August 3rd, 3rd Platoon Charlie Company lost two MRAPs when their convoy was hit with a powerful EMP blast. However, they were not directly engaged by any force and ultimately returned to Cop Magnus safely. The MRAPs, as of last reporting, have not been retrieved. On the 7th of August, Charlie Company CL reported 2nd Platoon had missed their scheduled report-ins. 1st Platoon was subsequently sent on patrol to confirm their status. 
On the 11th of August, Charlie Company missed their report into headquarters company. Multiple attempts have been made to contact, but have been unsuccessful. On the 12th of August, headquarters company missed the report in to the first BC headquarters. And on the 14th of August, in response to the above series of events, Havoc and attached assets deployed as ordered by the first BCT. So due to the use of this electronic warfare and the counterintelligence capabilities, we know Chaos SOP was to have all the collated intelligence and operation material securely stored at the COP Magnus SCIF. This includes all the op boards and patrol reports for Chaos to date. Based on the last communications with Chaos Elements, we believe it's critical to recover all information from the SCIF. This information is paramount to the further operations in the AEO. The current status of all Chaos and Goliath Elements, Charlie Company, and Headquarters Company is unknown. As such, infield intelligence gathering is going to be critical. The current counterintelligence and electronic warfare capability of OP4 is believed to remain intact and believed to be what is hampering contact between BCTHQ, HQ Company, and Charlie Company. The current whereabouts, composition, and structure of OP4 is unknown until Charlie Company's records can be accessed from Cop Magnus. All right, thanks, Sergeant McCaskey. That concludes the high-level summary from S3 Operations. So before we uh, hand over to S2, if anybody has any questions at this point in time, give us a quick Q&A chat. Uh, again, I'll, I'll give you a, a few seconds uh, to do that, and then we'll move along. All right, I will hand over to Lieutenant Lee uh, from S2 Intelligence. To start hey, with folks, our regional you, intelligence. Roger that. All right, folks, history and geography of the Republic of Kupali. First of all, I think we're all curious as to where the hell we're actually going. So, as you can see, the islands that we're going to is 3,400 kilometers west of the Harold E. Holt Naval Communication Station, which is on the west coast of Australia, 2,600 kilometers east of Reunion, which is an island on the east coast of Madagascar, and 3,600 kilometers south of Sri Lanka, which is the southernmost island on the south tip of India. All of these numbers, next slide please, uh, Lieutenant. All of these numbers serve to really show you just how remote this region we are heading to is. And if you recall from a decade ago, the search for the Malaysian Airlines MH370 airplane that went missing in this region was the last and only modern survey attempt conducted within this region. Next slide, please. As you can see, we're heading towards a tropical twinned island that is surrounded by multiple smaller islands. And the urbanization of these islands is roughly about 10%. They are very disparate and very spread out. The economy is extremely reliant on agriculture, fishing, forestry, and tourism, with 70% of the population living below the poverty line. What does this mean for you? It means that the population does not speak English. The population is not very educated, and they are most likely not friendly to foreign powers, especially considering their history, which I'll be going over in a minute. Next slide, please. A couple of points of interest. The Gurun and Monye airfields on each of the island, respectively. The Loho Holo Walled City. A number of ex colonial military, military compounds. A number of World War II Japanese bunker systems throughout the islands. And there have also been reports of possible tunnel and trench systems that we've uh, um, identified via the use of local tourism advertisements. Next slide, please. Now, the history of the Republic. This was previously a French overseas territory that has just gained independence in 1979. It still has strong ties to France. The locals obviously still speak French, and the local currency is the euro. This is an ex-colonial island chain. Now, don't ask me how I know this, but the US Army entering an ex-French colonial country has not had a very strong record 
we're not going to repeat that. Next slide, please. Next, we're going to go over the intelligence gathered from our allies thus far. First of all, the US Navy N2 intelligence. We have collab they have collaborated with nearby Australian-based assets, the Harrow E. Holt station and the Pine Gap station that we've uh, went over before. The Harold E. Holt station has intercepted off of voice transmissions through very low frequency radio, and their intel has revealed possible key locations throughout the AO, the details of which will be included in a separate INSCOM to be, to be published within 24 to 48 hours. Next slide, please. Now, the Royal Australian Corps signals, as a, a bit of an introduction, they are very specialized in telecommunications equipment, and they have reported that Alpha may be well versed in electronic warfare and counterintelligence. Meanwhile, the Australian Security Intelligence Organization, with their specialization in discovering espionage and sabotage, have also reported that the Alpha may be deeply integrated with the locals. Now, these two intelligence points combined means that, first of all, We are not looking to push any satellites over this region, hopefully to deter or to reduce the op the chances of op for noticing a change in our behavior. We're not looking to tip our hand. And secondly, this explains why the local population so far has not been cooperative and why we have had so much trouble finding these op for to begin with. Next slide, please. Now, as a Introduction to the Harrow E. Holt Naval Communication Station. The station is in charge of very low frequency radio for ships and submarines. It covers parts of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. And it is the most powerful transmission station in the Southern Hemisphere. This station will continue to be key for the operation going forward, especially since we have already discovered key intelligence via the use of very low frequency radio. Next slide, please. And as for the Pine Gap Station, it is in control of ground control and processing station for satellites and conducts signals, intelligence, and weapons targeting. To be more spe specific, one of its primary role Testing, hello, can you still hear me? Everything all thing. Okay, sorry. One of the primary functions of Pine Gap is to locate radio signals in the Eastern Hemisphere with the collected information fed into the US drone program. It is in charge of providing geolocation data for intelligence, military operations, including airstrikes. So the fact that OP4 has been able to conduct information warfare and electronic warfare to the level of disrupting one of these stations is extremely concerning and until we know more about their capabilities these stations will be lying low for the moment and once it is applicable to do so they will be back in the field and that is all i have any questions Sergeant Beckett. Thank you, sir. Uh, question is regarding the civilians. Um, is this an armed populace that we should expect, uh, given that they are expected to be unfriendly? Uh, so, I, look, at this stage, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say we expect them to be unfriendly. It's just that we don't necessarily expect them to be uh, hugely cooperative. I know it's a very small distinction, but I would at this point make the distinction until we can prove otherwise. Um, I would expect uh, some level of arms carrying uh, within uh, the populace, uh, just due to they they have a largely primary production uh, lifestyle. Uh, I think S2 will have some material about that a little bit further down the road um, uh, in terms of some of the, the stuff I've seen them working on. Um, but we, you have a lot of people there who are involved in, you know, agriculture and stuff like that where um a level of arms carrying is to be expected does that answer that for you son 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, one more question, if I may. Of course. Have we have we identified or named who the op for is? Did I miss that? Uh, we will come to that in the, in the kind of the last part of the operations briefing. We'll talk about op four in a bit more detail. Understood. It's all for me, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Sergeant uh, Sergeant Madsen. Thank you, sir. Um, can we come back to um, the semi-independent from France? Um, so if hostile forces were there and they are not uh, local forces, would that be construed as a attack on France and thus an attack on NATO? Or like how exactly is their independence versus not independence from France? Uh, that's my question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the question, and I appreciate the the NATO implication becomes complicated. Um, look, uh, certainly at this point in time, we have no reason to believe uh, that the players here have a direct association uh, with uh, France themselves. Uh, that's more of a local government style affiliation uh, rather than a militaristic one. And again, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit uh, in the uh, OB4 briefing. Uh, in the S3 operations briefing. <clears throat> Does that answer that for you, Sergeant? Uh, not completely, but we'll take it early that uh, before. And, uh, yeah, take it there. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Roger that. If we get to the end of the OP4 briefing and you still have questions on that front, uh, feel free to uh, let me know and we'll readdress. Uh, Chief Warnick. Thank you, Lieutenant. Sorry, I was driving home and was listening in. Uh, so I wasn't able to ask my question earlier. Due to us losing contact with most of Charlie Company, are we expecting a very high level of friendly casualties to be found across the island? Yeah, good question, Chief. So, so frankly, the answer is we don't know. Um, the when we did have contact with those elements, um, it, it's not like they were uh, screaming back daily about high levels of contact, right? Like. We, we touched on that a little bit in the high-level summary, uh, and I think we're about to go into a bit more detail on that as well. But we, we really think that most of the issue here is is one of electronic warfare um, and counterintelligence. Um, but nevertheless, you know, additional ground forces are being deployed to uh, ensure that the mission can be you know completed, right? And if that um, it, part of that is that you know we'll have um, some more assets with us, which again, we'll get into here in a little bit. Uh, but also if those forces are in trouble, then obviously we're, we're here to help them out. Um, but we're also here to kind of expedite the the wrapping up of this uh, to try and knock out this uh, capability in this area. Does that answer that for you, Chief? Perfectly. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you very much. Uh, Private Zimmerman. Thank you, LT. Uh, my question is how densely populated is this island? Are we expecting a lot of civilians or are we expecting maybe a couple sprinkled out settlements here and there? Uh, yeah, so it's it's kind of both, right? So there are definitely areas of, of high popu higher population density to be expected. Um, you know, some of the positions that um, Lieutenant Lee covered here a second ago, you know, they've got they've got enough population to have you know, uh, an, uh, a civilian operated airfield uh, on each island. They have um, a number of, of towns. They have a tourism economy, stuff like that. So there's there's still a level uh, of dense population, but there are also parts of the island which are just, they're, they're hard to inhabit, right? Everything else aside, uh, it would take a massive amount of, of reforming the landscape to inhabit those parts of the island, uh, and the reality is, is the locals are not that cashed up. Um, does that answer that for you, Private? Yes, it does. I do have a follow-up question. Uh, go for it. I did catch that we had some naval intelligence involved. Are we are we expecting any naval support in any way? Uh, there's there's none on the roster at this point in time, but we will talk a little bit uh, later on here about what support is uh, being uh, what support is coming down the line from our deployment. All right, that's all for me. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem at all. Um, all right, I will uh, stall for like one half second longer. Uh, all right, I will hand over to Sergeant Mikowski to start with the Blue 4 element briefing. All right, thank you, LT. Blue 4 elements right now, 
Odin 6 and a small contingent of supporting assets maintain airbase Heimdall with limited anti-aircraft cover in place. Odin 5, Goliath 6, Goliath 5, and all of Chaos are no longer in radio contact, but their Blue Force tracker and helmet cameras are also no longer functioning. It's assumed that a large EMP blast has affected communications, but the area must be investigated to confirm. The exact disposition of and any contact being sustained by these elements is unknown to us, and I want to make it clear that given the time since our last contact with Blue Force elements, it is unclear if friendly forces are present or have been forced to disperse from their last known locations. Alpha Company, the 1506, call sign Havoc. Alpha Flight of the 19th Air Support Operations Squadron, call sign Dagger, have redeployed orders for Airbase Heimdall, with the intent being immediately redeployed to the main islands of Kupale. Delta Company, 5101, call sign Phoenix, and the 74th Squadron, 23rd Wing, call sign Thunder, will redeploy with Alpha Company to Airbase Heimdall and operate from there for the foreseeable future. Uh, Sergeant, a quick note here, if I can. Sorry to uh, interrupt. I've just, I've got a, an update on the uh, flight paths in and out of that airbase uh, for aviation. I know both of our leads are here. So, uh, arrivals, uh, so approaches into that airbase are, are runway 32, uh, departures from that airbase are runway 14 uh, only. Um, so, that's uh, basically all traffic out to the southeast. Uh, just uh, to uh, avoid uh, any proximity to the main islands. Sorry, Sergeant, I just wanted to touch on that. Uh, carry on. Thank you for the clarification, LT. Uh, the final asset that we've uh, added up here is the ODA 5221 call sign Stalker. They're also being redeployed to the airbase. Supporting assets in the AO should maintain a safe flying distance to not overfly the main islands until more intelligence of the situation is gathered. As a result, this will add to flight time between Airbase Heimdall and the main islands of Kupale. And all aviation assets need to account for that. Havoc and attachments have priority tasking to try and secure a usage agreement over the Serbia B. Leon Aerodome and the King Charles X Airport with the civilian operators. Cop Magnus, Cop Magnus Skiff must be patrolled and confirmed secure as a priority. The Havoc elements which clear the Skiff must relay all information uncovered by urgent air transport back to Odin at Airbase Heimdall. Further Air Blue Four forces are currently being spun up to support the Alpha Company and their assets in the AO. Those forces and their expected arrivals are as follows. 32nd CAV, Sabre, no later than the 7th of September. 32nd FAR, Rainmaker, no later than the 12th of October. 326 BSB, Apollo, no later than 24th of October. The 426 BSB, Mustang, no later than the 26th of October. The presence of these assets in the AOs will be advised through the warning orders of each phase. All right, thanks, Sergeant. Um, I will, uh, at this point, quickly talk everyone through the information that we have available uh, about our opposition force. So the Allied Intelligence effort has been tracking a similar, ca similar counterintelligence and electronic warfare capability in a number of smaller operations in countries throughout Southeast Asia and the Western European Union. Uh, and there is a group that we believe to be behind all of those operations. Uh, the, the group suspected to be responsible uh, is the Dragon Military Group. Uh, if you want to watch me try and pronounce the other thing without offending half a country, you let me know. Um, look, there's very little information uh, available about the composition and capability of this group. Um, other than the fact that their electronic warfare and counterintelligence signal, uh, signature is somewhat known uh, and has been tracked through a, no a number of other AOs uh, where they have interfaced with 
uh, either US or allied uh, military operations. Uh, that being said, I do want to stress whether or not it is definitely this group uh, remains to be confirmed. Uh, this is a this is a belief. Uh, this is a educated guess. This is a hunch, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, we are. Uh, chasing an electronic signature uh, rather than anything that's been uh, hardline confirmed. Um, regardless of who the op four actually ends up being, uh, it's clear from Chaos's patrol reports that they've worked very hard to tightly integrate with the local population. Um, and they're likely doing that by offering very minimal, uh, if any, negative impact to daily life on the island, right? So we've got uh, Op4 coming in that uh, is trying to not make any waves, trying to not, you know, get off anybody's Christmas card list. Uh, they're probably, you know, cashed up and, and buying supplies and food and whatever else uh, from the locals, uh, which probably has earned them some favour. Um, at the time of this briefing, there's no information available to Havoc Elements about the scale, composition or capability of Op4. Um, we obviously hope this information comes available rapidly uh, through information we can recover from the Cop Magnus skiff. So as so the Phoenix and Thunder assets are going to be the first dedicated ISR platforms uh, tasked to this AO. Um, so whenever an opportunity exists to conduct ISR on a broader area, uh, that ISR should focus on any larger scale installations, uh, those which would be necessary for this type of counterintelligence and electronic warfare capability. So what I'm trying to say there without saying it is please find the big antenna right that's that's ultimately what we're chasing here all right and before i get into the last part of this briefing uh quick questions in chat i know i, I said to a couple of you before that we'd come back and regroup some stuff um i'm not sure if that's answered it uh specialist bro thank you LT. um so my question is, if we are under the assumption at this point that we have lost communications with the entirety of a company, um, we have had no naval reconnaissance aircraft fly over the area or satellites for whatever reason. Um, if it is believed at this time that we lost communications with them due to an EMP, is it not also safe to assume that the OP4 element also has no communication as EMPs are non-discriminatory in terms of what devices they disable? Yeah, look, good question, right? So uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know the answer, but it is a good assumption. So um, there is... Um, a lot of these, uh, not a lot of, I suppose, but the attacks that we're aware of, in particular, the occasion where we lost those MRAPs that we talked about at the start of the briefing, um, you know, that took place in a, a remote area um, of the island, uh, you know, not adjacent to civilian population. Um, so what their control scheme is for these devices, what their proximity is at the time of the attack, we don't know the answer to that. Um, but as you said, obviously, there's, if, if they're close by, it's going to, it's going to, mess their shit up as well right so it's it's a consideration um at this point we just don't know until we get out there and see it how coordinated and how you know well informed these people are whether they are you know highly sophisticated and they've, they've really worked this shit out um or whether they are just doing a whole bunch of you know hit run attacks and and kind of hoping for the best um i i don't um I don't have a great answer for that, but we also we also haven't really hardline confirmed it's it's definitely uh, an AMP attack, right? Like the the vehicles going down, we know it is, uh, but whether it's whether that's what's affecting all of our comms with the island, we actually don't know. Uh, we are making an assumption based on our history with uh, the Op4. Uh, if that goes some way to answer your question, Specialist Bro. Roger, appreciate it, LT. No problem at all. Sergeant Beckett. Thank you, Lieutenant. This is uh, similarly following along with trying to identify what we're up against, right? Um, it seems like this is some sort of non-state actor. Otherwise, surely we'd have a uh, kind of deeper delve into their intelligence. Um, do we know what the Op4 objective is? 
what like what are they doing? Why are they doing it? Yeah, good question, Sergeant. I I mean, if I was to if I was to make a guess, uh, you know, based on what we do know, um, I I think they're they're here for for counterintelligence reasons. I think, um, you know, as you say, potentially non-state actor. Um, you know, what what those exact motivators look like uh, is unclear. Again, we're hoping to unravel that. Uh, you know, we know that Charlie Company has been here for a while. They've gone out, they've done stuff, they've seen things. They they have patrol reports. I just don't have them to talk to you about them. So we'll get into how we're solving that, you know, issue here in a second. Um, but, you know, we are hoping that as we spend some time here, we can really get a lot of intelligence going really quickly. And, and also it's going to be much higher up our list of things to focus on, right? So um, the area is going to get a lot more attention, uh, which will sort of facilitate some intelligence efforts as well. Uh, understood, sir. Thank you. Uh, no problem, Sergeant. Uh, Sergeant Yeager. Uh, thank you, sir. So understand that this is either, uh, uh, you know, some sort of proxy element or something, but what is the status of the the ROK military and police? Uh, I, uh, I do not have a prepared answer to that question. Um, <laughs> here was me thinking I thought of most things. Um, uh, we we basically feel like uh, at this point that they've essentially done such a good job greasing up the locals that the locals are not uh, particularly fussed as to the operations of this group um, uh, because we're, we're just not getting any sort of traction on intelligence kind of uh, coming out of the island really at all unless it's intelligence we find ourselves. So that's again, that's an assumption. Um, uh, we'll have to we'll have to get in there and find out. Good copy, sir. Thank you. No problem at all. Uh, Sergeant Stevens. Thank you, sir. Uh, given the nature of the near peer uh, level to their electronic warfare, do we expect any or know of any GPS jamming happening in the area? Uh, we don't know of any uh, taking place. Um, I, I know everything at this point is a distinct possibility, uh, but I I don't have uh, any information back from Charlie Company that they've experienced that at this time. Thank you, sir. No problem, Captain Clay. Thank you, Lieutenant. Do we have a airport diagram created by S2 from uh, Charlie Company for our current airbase, or is there one searchable? Uh, Captain Clay, I will get with you separately uh, after the briefing uh, to try and resolve that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Emin Crow. Thanks, LT. Uh, given that the population doesn't speak English, is there any? Uh, are we going to employ any sort of translators to try to help minimize that communication barrier between the population and us? Uh, so at this stage, we're specifically hunting down um, leads from Charlie Company. Um, once we've been able to get in there and see what they've been up to and how they've been doing, they've they've attempted contact with the locals, right? So they, they would have some kind of solution to this. Uh, our hope is to get in there and, and piggyback off whatever that solution is. We know that they have been talking with the locals, just not having any success with the locals. Um, uh, we'll be informed by their operations so far once we can get a hand on their uh, records to figure out what that looks like. Copy. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Private Zimmerman. Thank you, sir. I just had one question in terms of Airbase Heimdall. How is the defensive structure looking on that? Is it well fortified or are we looking more at like a shack with a runway? Uh, it's a it's a definite halfway in between those things. So the problem we have there at the moment is there's very few people around to crew it uh, because they all went to the islands and then we all stopped hearing from them. So um, there are there there is um, anti-air cover um, at the airbase. Uh, we have not sustained any contact out of uh, that airbase, um, you know that we're aware of. So we don't foresee any immediate issues at that airbase. However, we do want to get out of there just because it's a long way away. Uh, we'd like to be on one of the main islands so that all of our operations are centralized uh, and we can work you know, side by side with each other as we are used to. Um, but that's that's the main reason we're looking to get out. We're not looking to get out because it's you know undefendable or anything like that. All right, that's all for me. Thank you. 
Yeah, no problem at all. Okay. All right. So the last thing uh, I'm going to cover really at this point is we're going to talk about the sequence of events on the morning of the, the 20th of August, um, which is coming up here, uh, obviously, real soon. So this is our phase one timeline. Uh, so phase one missions run almost concurrently due to the urgent nature of the situation, right? So preparations to step off on patrol will need to be started essentially as soon as we get off the C-130. So um, we're going to get you all dismounted um, and then we're going to start gearing up and stepping off again essentially uh, straight away. So um, the... So I suppose firstly, before I cover this in detail, right, we're going to notate this uh, in all of our uh, future warnos, uh, the step off timings and how they relate to each other. So make sure you do kind of have a look at that when each warning order comes out. So we're going to air, we're going to airlift out of our airbase Leadwood um, uh, for a direct transfer uh, straight uh, to uh, our airbase here, and then. With a little bit of buffer for, for flight time or whatever else, um, Task Force Alpha is going to more or less immediately start their uh, preparation to step off, um, you know, grabbing their kits, um, you know, talking through a plan, getting everyone counted off, stuff like that. Um, as part of that, the ODA element um, is going to step off almost immediately um, at that point, uh, and that's detailed in the warning order uh, for this phase of operations. That warning order is now live to facilitate Task Force Alpha's uh, planning here very shortly as well, which will cover that in a little bit more detail specifically related to Task Force Alpha. Once Task Force Alpha, once Task Force Alpha departs, uh, we're, we're being really cautious here about our airspace traffic. Um, we're then going to have Task Force Charlie start to uh, prep their equipment in a similar nature to what Task Force Alpha did. Um, and essentially, when Task Force Alpha's birds get back, Task Force Charlie will be mounting up uh, and stepping off. Uh, and then in turn, Task Force Bravo will continue in the same vein. So it's going to be a very busy morning uh, at an airbase that has not had a lot of traffic previously. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to just be uh, organized and grab our stuff, um, but also, you know, working methodically uh, just to get this stuff done in a, in a tidy fashion. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Lieutenant McCoy from Alpha Company to um, provide their comments um, and comments on behalf of Alpha Company, uh, as well as any specific uh, briefing notes for the task force level. Thank you, Lieutenant Hartman. All right, so it's been 72 hours plus or minus since we've had contact with friendly forces. That is my or an Alpha Company's HQ's primary concern uh, as we enter this. Uh, deployment is we really need to find out what happened or what's going on with friendly forces to make sure that we're securing the area. Hopefully uh, that's a non-issue, uh, but it's been 72 hours already, so uh, that's a big problem uh, for us. So platoon HQs, I need you to make sure your guys are squared away. Uh, we will be airlifting uh, from our current location in uh, just over 48 hours, So, uh, and we're going to be stepping right off basically once we uh, hit the ground. So there is a big sense of urgency here. Um, we need to get in there, find out what happened, secure uh, areas that we had previously secured, or hopefully they are still secured and we'll have uh, already a foothold. But do not expect that uh, going in. We don't know what happened. We need to be vigilant uh, and take care of fucking business here, gentlemen. So platoon HQs, make sure you guys are squared away uh, and be ready to go. That's really all I have from company. First Sergeant, do you have anything? Uh, thank you, XO. All right, you warriors. We're standing on the edge of the unknown. We're going to face down a threat that thinks it's got the upper hand on us. But I'll tell you one thing straight up. It's got another fucking thing coming. This ain't going to be no Sunday picnic. We're heading out to show this threat that we're the baddest bunch that ever lays up their boots. We eat challenges like this for breakfast and we spit them out as victory. We ain't backing down. We're moving forward. I don't care if this threat's got three heads or ten. We've got our training, our brotherhood, and a fire in our guts that won't quit. Communication, our lifeline. Teamwork, it's our blood. Adaptability, we wrote the goddamn book on it. We're going to make the unknown known piece by piece. We'll recon, maneuver, and execute like the well-oiled machine that we are. Keep your heads cool under fire. That's when we shine the brightest. Look to your left, look to your right. 
those soldiers bleed and sweat alongside you. We don't leave anyone behind. We're going to push through, protect each other, and come back stronger than ever. Warriors of Alpha Company, let's get amped up, let's get focused, and let's get ready to bring the thunder. So gear up and let's stomp that unknown threat into the dust. Huh? Thank you, XL. Well said for Sergeant. Well, I really hate having to follow that speech up. Um, uh, just, uh, just one thing really quick, uh, Lieutenant. Uh, Ten mics, all Task Force Alpha section leaders. Uh, we're going to meet and discuss this Warno, and we're going to plan for our first phase, because uh, once we we get there, we're going to be rocking and rolling. So make sure you guys can sleep on this fucking flight. It's a long one. Right, thanks, XO. Um, and uh, thanks for Sergeant Spears uh, as well. Uh, and look, that really... Uh, concludes the briefing from S3 Operations and our pre-prepared material for this briefing in general. Um, I will give uh, one final opportunity for questions and comments uh, if anybody has them uh, before uh, we wrap up here. Uh, Sergeant Tosco. Thank you, LT. Uh, so going into this deployment, uh, I'm just looking for maybe a more definitive answer on what our main objective is stepping in is it going to be to find our guys and make sure they're okay then get them out or are we more of looking for a fight and seizing intel and figuring out how this happened opposed to just getting our guys out if i'm sorry good question so uh the goal is to uh is to get in there and, and figure out what's happening with charlie company and uh do whatever we need to do to make charlie company okay again um and then we're going to work alongside them to finish the mission that that they were originally deployed here for which is to uh you know locate and eliminate the electronic warfare and counterintelligence uh, capability that's believed to be coming out of this island um, or locate enough intelligence to confirm that it's definitely not coming out of this island uh, and push that back uh, up the chain to uh, our allied intelligence effort uh, to get them to, you know, look somewhere else. Uh, but this is where they believe it's coming from. So we're going to go and, uh, you know, either prove them right or prove them wrong. But if we can prove them right, we're going to take care of it while we're here. Hey, from thank you. No problem at all. Uh, I'll give it a couple of seconds. Um, but uh, feel free to, to drop any season cues while I'm saying this last bit. But uh, one last note before we wrap up today. Um, you know, hopefully uh, that gives you a bit of an insight into what the deployment is looking like and some of the work that we've been working on. Um, if it looks like something that you would like to be involved in, all of our deployment teams are, are still sort of looking for volunteers uh, through S2, S3 and S4. Um, so I want to acknowledge uh, that if you've been a part of those uh, shops in the past, um, you know, your experience may not be exactly the experience we were looking to create. We've, we've done a bit of restructuring. We've had a few changes where we're trying to, you know, make things a lot easier and a lot less burdensome uh, to be involved in. So it's a lot more, you know, you give as much as you can uh, rather than, you know, needing to sacrifice your firstborn. So um, if you are interested, uh, I'd encourage you to reach out um, and see about getting involved. Um, but with no more CSOQs, that's uh, this briefing concluded. So I'll, again, I really want to sincerely thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, we didn't really know how many people would be here. Uh, and it's good to see a bunch of people interested um, in what we've been working on and what the deployment looks like. Um, looking forward to seeing everybody in the field. Uh, I'm going to stick around uh, here for a little bit. If anyone has any questions or comments, they uh, don't feel like asking in front of the group. Um, I'll be around uh, if needed. Uh, Private McKnight. In regards to the workshops that you're talking about, um, if we're not exactly sure if we want to get involved, is it possible to like maybe like during one of them we could sit around and listen to how it like all goes down and make a decision? Yeah, so that 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 depends a little bit. Um, let's you and I discuss that separately. Um, stick around and we'll have a chat about that um, right, in a bit more detail. All right. Um, anybody else? Like I said, you're welcome to stick around, ask any questions. Otherwise, that's the end of the briefing. Thank you uh, for coming, and you're all dismissed. Okay, well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I'm looking forward to this deployment. I know there's some some unanswered questions stills, uh, stills, a lot of un a lot of unanswered questions still, um, you know, and not not all the geopolitical stuff was answered, but 
we will hopefully get to that when the uh, deployment starts. So this Sunday, um, 20 hundred Task Force Alpha, I'll be leading the first task force into the foray here. So uh, hopefully we'll see you guys then. And until then, have a good night and thanks for watching.